My journey started on the 9th of December 2013 with a long flight of 23 hours to the other side of the world from Vienna over Dubai and Sydney. The delay of the connection flight caused a long stay in Dubai. Because of that, I missed the connection flight from Sydney to Auckland. But finally, after 32 hours, I was there. arrived in Auckland, the biggest city in New Zealand. The first two nights I spent in the YJ Backpackers Hostel in downtown and did a lot of sightseeing. Oh, my God. 
third day, I picked up my rented car at Auckland Airport, and I was heading to Matamata and my first Lord of the Rings set location. The next morning, after a street party in Matamata, I got the tickets for the Hobbit and Set tour in the new Matamata eyesight. The house was rebuilt in the new Hobbit design. From there it goes with a bus to a huge farm stay just outside of Matamata, driving over lovely green hills full of sheep. And then it was there. Next destination was Vakapapa in the Tongariro National Park. On the way there, I stopped at the shores of Lake Taupo.
I arrived in Tongariro National Park the evening before and spent a freezing night in the car. Before I started the trek, I visited some locations nearby. From Vakapapa, I drove further to the end of the road, to the Vakapapa ski area at the slopes of Mount Ruapeo. A volcanic wasteland covered with razor-sharp rocks. I took a quiet ascent up to Mount Ruapeo, the land of Mordor and Demin Mui. It was time to start the Tongariro Northern Circuit, a three-day trek crossing a bone-dry volcanic area. The most demanding and exhausting part of this was the side trek up to the summit of Mount Norhore, also known as Mount Doom. Steep, slippery and dangerous, after that ascent I knew Frodo and Sam felt when they climbed the summit of Mount Doom.
the other side of Mount Ruapeo, nearby a town called Ohakun, there was another shooting location where Gollum catched a fish in a stream in Ithilien. On the eighth day, I was heading from Vakapapa to Mokai Gravity Canyon, a bungee jumping spot on the Rangitikai River, not for bungee jumping, but to visit a magnificent Lord of the Rings set location of the Anduin River. Again, after a night in the car, I took a long drive to Cape Palliser, at the very end of North Island, to visit a spectacular Lord of the Rings set location at the Putangirua Pinnacles, also known as the Path of the Dead.
I'm heading to Wellington, the capital city of New Zealand. There are some Lord of the Rings locations to discover, so let's see. And always remember, keep left. After my arrival, I went to the terminal of Wellington Airport to see the big sculptures built by Weather Workshop for the Hobbit movies. The next day, I walked along the coast of Miramar, defying a storm and beholding Peter Jackson's residences in Caraca Bay. At last, I visited the Weather Cave in Miramar. Next morning, the 22nd of December, I dropped off my rented car and walked the coastline to Wellington downtown. There I spent three nights in the YJ hostel near the waterfront. I went up to Mount Victoria, just next to downtown. In the forest, at the slopes of Mount Victoria, they shoot at a scene where Frodo and Sam crossing woodland in the Shire. Even with a map, the set location was pretty hard to find and recognize. But the most famous scene up there was the scene where the Hobbits had their first encounter with the Nazgul. Embassy Theatre. For me, the most exciting cinema of all, where the world premiere of The Return of the King and the first Hobbit movie, An Unexpected Journey, took place. I was very looking forward to that moment, watching the desolation of Smaug in Embassy, a huge old-style cinema interior with Dolby Atmos sound. Raise a 
Two weeks have passed, and it was Christmas Day. My journey through North Island was over. I went on board of the Inter-Island Ferry, taking a three hours passage to Picton, the gateway to South Island. On the 27th of December, I took a water taxi to Ship Cove, the access point of the Queen Charlotte Trek, a three-day hike to Anakiwa.
Dagutala mo nila batin Ay amuti ako eh Dimana ya ko tolong Lagi ka pa ko iti eh Emana to hamana to toko kainga Hamana to toko kainga Emana to hamana to toko kainga Hamana to toko kainga It was New Year's Day, and I picked up my next rented car, heading to Nelson, to visit the famous workshop of Jens Hansen, the true creator of the One Ring. Heavy rain, my journey continued from Nelson to Arthur's Pass in the Southern Alps. The Avalanche Peak Circuit was cancelled because of flash flood and landslides. So I used the time to see the Devil's Punch Bowl falls in pouring rain, falling down 112 meters of the mountainside. Out of the mountains, out of the rain. My next stop is Dry Valley and the Cave Stream Scenic Reserve. It's a location near a town called Castle Hill, not an hour away from Arthur's Pass. It's a place where a mountain stream runs underground a huge plateau. For the Maori, it was a traditional road to pass the mountains.
Next, I was heading to Orangutato Valley, the most remote place I've ever seen. vast valley surrounded by mountains and in the middle there is one small hill Mount Sunday or Edoras and the West Ford. I was leaving the fantastic Rangitata Valley, heading south, back into the mountains to Mount Cook, the highest mountain in New Zealand. On the way, I stopped at the amazing Lake Tecapo.
leaving the glaciers behind me, I drove to Twizel, a town south of Lake Bukaki, where vast plains stand out, and where the biggest battle scene in old movie history took place. The day after, I drove from Twizel to Lake Wanaka and the Trouble Cone Ski Area. It's a shooting location where the Fellowship crossed the landscape at the foot of the Misty Mountains. Part of the Kavarau River near Queenstown was my next destination. One other of many set locations for the Anduin River, but a very special one for me.
took me about three hours from Cavaral River to a place called Poolburn, a huge rock-covered prairie in central Otago, where Aragorn, Legolas and Gimli chased Urukai many days across the plains of Rohan. Poolburn Reservoir in that area was used for the saints but the orcs raided the villages in the west fall of Rohan. Bad weather came again, and on the long way from Poolburn to Tianao, I stopped at Arrowtown, a historic gold mining town at the Arrow River. Near Tianao, at Lake Manapuri, there is an access point to the famous Kaplan Trek in Fjordland. I only have planned to walk a part of it in one day. The Waiau River near the track was also used for some wide shots for the Anduin River. It was still rainy and I was heading back to north to the Mavora Lakes, also a spot of some amazing Lord of the Rings set locations. At the very south end of the Mavora Lakes, there were huge Tusuk fields, besides large forests. It's the place where Rohan border to Fangorn Forest.
I was heading north again, to the end of the stupendous Lake Wakatipu, to a remote town called Glenarchy. In that area, there are access points to two of the most famous Great Walks, the Greenstone and Capus Trek and the Rootburn Trek. The last route with my rented car was to Queenstown, the adventure capital of New Zealand. Near Queenstown, on the shores of Lake Wakatipu, I visited a place called Twelve Mile Delta, one of the set locations for Ethelion. The last set location I visited was at the top of the mountain range called 
the Remarkables near Queenstown, a high ascent to Lake Alta, the sad location for the East Gate of Moria. The last day has come, and my journey through Middle-earth was over. I'll take my memories with me and unpack them fondly remembering this place. 36 days to the day, I was set up to this journey, but now it was time to go back home. I'm so grateful for all what happened on my journey and I've experienced for all the fascinating and breathtaking landscapes I discovered so far from home, for all the people I've met, and for rediscovering myself. Journey's end.